Hey guys, Jason here with another tutorial from RWB NetSec. Uh, today we're going to be going over the Fierce Domain Scanner. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. So Fierce is a tool that was written by Robert Hansen, also known as Rsnake, and you probably know him if you've looked at any of the XSS cheat sheets and uh, the website he used to have, hackers.org, which I don't think is up anymore. Um, but the tool itself is a domain scanner and um, it kind of works the same way as some of the other tools that we've looked at but there are a couple of things that it does that the other ones don't uh, one cool thing that it does is when it finds a valid host or IP address it does a reverse lookup for the IP space above and below that host so I think by default it will go up five and down five from that uh, specific IP, but you can specify a, a different number there. Um, this also helps you to uncover additional hosts uh, that the brute forcing method may not have found. Uh, but we'll look at this more in action as we start using the tool. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up Fierce. We'll take a look at the options that it has. So within Kali, if you just go up to Applications, Information Gathering, DNS Analysis, oops, and then click on Fierce. And you can see here there are several options that it has here. So we'll just go briefly go over them. Um, we're not going to be using all of these switches in the tutorial, mainly because some of them generate quite a bit of traffic and it could be considered uh, pretty intrusive to the target host. Uh, but we'll look at this first one here, this uh, TAC Connect option. So Fierce will take any of the um, servers that it finds and try to pull back any HTTP headers uh, from any web servers that are running. And this could be useful, this could show you uh, what version of um, web servers running and then you could take that and see if there's any publicly available exploits for it. Uh, just another method of attack that you could use. The uh, attack delay lets you specify the number of seconds to wait between lookups. Uh, that could be useful if you're going against a target that maybe is running, you know, their servers are slow, their network's slow, something like that. Uh, attack DNS uh, lets you specify the domain that you're going to be targeting. Uh, the TAC DNS file lets you give it a, a file that has uh, DNS servers that you want to use for reverse lookups. And if you do that, make sure that each server is listed on a separate line by itself. Uh, TAC DNS server lets you specify just a specific DNS server that you want to use for reverse lookups. And you can see here he recommends using the target's DNS server for those kinds of queries. Uh, the TAC file uh, just lets you specify a file to save your results to. Uh, by default, it's just going to display everything to the screen, but you'll want to save those results so you can go back to them later and reference them. Uh, the TAC full output is used with the TAC connect option, and this just pulls back everything. And instead of just the HTTP headers, it's going to pull back everything that that web server sends. Uh, TAC no pattern, uh, which we're not going to be using. Uh, the TAC range lets you specify a range to scan against. Uh, we're not going to use this one either because it can be kind of noisy. Uh, the TAC search. Um, say you've, you've got a, a target domain that you're going against, but you know maybe that that target has other public servers with different names. If, if you know maybe what some of those names could be, you can provide a list of them here and uh, comma separated and Fierce will also look at those. And see the other one, the TAC threads, that one is pretty important here. By default, Fierce is going to run uh, just in single threaded mode, and which can be quite slow. So if you specify threads running your scans, it's going to speed up the process quite a bit. And the TAC traverse, this is the one that uh, that I was talking about during the intro where it will go up a certain number and below uh, a certain number for any discovered IPs that it finds. 
by default it is set to five but you can specify a, another number if you want to there and it could uncover additional hosts uh, the tech wide option will let you scan an entire class C address, and, and we're not going to be using that here. Um, and of course, you've got TAC word list, which will let you specify a custom word list to use for the uh, domain brute forcing. Fierce does have its own word list to use, uh, but I did find during my testing and, and going through the tool that using different word lists could, could um, give you back different results. I think by default the fierce word list has around 2200 entries so if you, if you have a word list that is maybe larger than that you may be, get better results back alright so now that we've gone over the options we'll go ahead and start running through some of the scans here I'm just gonna take this uh, window and move it up kinda of minimize it a little bit and open a new terminal window that we can work out of so and I just selected a random uh, domain to use but the syntax is going to be uh, you just run fierce use the tac DNS switch specify the domain that you're targeting and then I'm going to add the tac threads on here just to speed up the process I'm going to set it to 10 and then hit enter and it's still going to take it uh, just a little bit to run here you see it shows it's performing uh, 2280 tests which is the length of the word list that it's using and you can see that it's now finished so if we scroll back up here and just kinda go through what fierce is doing so the first thing it does is it does a request and it gets the name servers for the domain that you're targeting once it gets those it attempts to do a zone transfer uh, if the zone transfer is not successful then it'll start doing its brute force attacks um, before it does the brute force it does check to see if wildcard DNS is enabled and then it does the brute force you can see here it found uh, quite a few there are subdomains for this uh, target domain after it finishes the brute forcing then it shows you any of the subnets that it finds and then you could take these later and um, do reverse lookups on these to see if you find any other hosts and continue uh, probing from there to see what else you can find so I'll also go ahead and mention here um, like I said by default fierce does have its own word list that it uses uh, but you can specify another word list so if we go back to the same command that we run uh, add the TAC word list option and I'm just going to use the word list that comes with DNS recon so we'll do uh, slash user share DNS recon and name list dot text and then you can let it run through there uh, but it seems like when I did this before I don't think I discovered any any new subdomains with it uh, but there are larger word lists that you can download from the internet so if you've got better lists uh, go ahead and use those just know that the larger the list that you use uh, the more time it will take so just keep that in mind and you can see here that this list only contains uh, 1907 entries so again it's finished and it looks like that all the domains that it discovered here are the the same as we got before so nothing new on this one so the next option we'll look at is the tech connect option so let me go down here I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen so we'll again use fierce tech DNS and I'll just use the same domain again it's 10 and then we're going to do tech connect and we need to point it to a file that contains uh, the domain info and I just created a uh, a file there on the desktop so it's called knife uh, not knife center fierce connect dot text we'll hit enter here 
And it's still going to run through the same checks that it does with the other scans, except now it's going to add in uh, checking the HTTP headers. So you can see here toward the end, it's it's throwing back some of the headers and some HTML that it discovered. So then what this is useful for, if you start going back through some of these responses, uh, let's see if we can find one here. And it, it, it will tell you which subdomain that it's pulling these uh, answers back from. It appears that this one is just got an Apache server test page and it's running on CentOS. Here's run the one that's running um, Apache 2225 on CentOS. So you could take this information and maybe look up this version of Apache and see if there are any public exploits available for it. And then that may be another way that you could attack the system and gain entry into it. You know, just remember as you're going through these different options and running these tools, make sure that you're keeping track of all the information that you're getting back because that could come into play later. Um, it may not be that you need this right now uh, during a particular point in your test, but at some point later on, you may remember that, hey, I, I found out this version number. Let me see if I can exploit it some way. So just make sure you're keeping track of all this. Um, the next thing we'll look at, too, is uh, sa actually saving these results to a file so you can go back to them later. So let's go down here. We'll just use the same command. And this time we'll use the TAC file switch and you can see how it already created I'll just overwrite the file that's on the desktop there uh, we'll do root desktop knife center dot text hit enter and yes I want to override it Again, running through all the same tests again. And then once it finishes, then we should be able to go to our file, open it up, and you can see that it's got the, uh, everything is displayed the same as what you see in the terminal window. So the last thing I wanted to show in this video is what happens when Fierce comes across a a domain that actually allows a zone transfer to take place. So if we run the tool again, type DNS, uh, this time we're going to use uh, the zone transfer me site. And use threads again. Hit enter. And the zone transfer takes place. And it, it will be the same information that we've seen in the other videos uh, for some of the other tools that came up. And you'll notice at this point, once it uh, finds out that it can do a zone transfer, Fierce will stop running at this point. Mm -hmm. So you, you could then take the information that you find here, uh, some of these other uh, subdomains, the OWA, these different offices, and you could continue your testing from there, probing these, um, these servers, looking I mean you can see that you've got names in here email addresses um, like phone numbers these are all things that you could use for maybe a social engineering attack or coming up with a client side attack maybe a phishing attack of some kind so this is all good, good info to get just make sure you keep track of everything and look at everything in here don't just pick one piece of data out here and forget the rest of it because everything that you find in here could be significant in allowing you to get into the target. So Fierce is a good tool to use for DNS enumeration. It's probably one of the top tools that people will use 
uh, between Fierce and DNS Recon or DNS Enum. Um, it works, you know, basically like all the other ones. Like I said before, there are a couple of features that it has that the other ones don't have. So it's always good to use more than one tool to verify results because uh, you may get different info back from different tools. So using multiple ones will make sure that you don't miss anything. Of course, manual verification is always a good thing as well because there will be things that tools just don't find that you need to manually be able to get to. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if it's your first time here, I would love if you subscribe to the channel and share it out with all of your friends. So my hope is to build a community where we can help each other learn and grow in security, especially if you're just getting into it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you all have an awesome day. See you guys.